This work is from a student named Lawrence Meyer and it's for a commercial interior design project, specifically a restaurant. The first few pages of this portfolio show how the student has researched the client and their requirements. And as this is a commercial interior design project, she's also investigated the target market, the type of food and menu being offered, and she's used all of this research to inform her interior design concept. The HNC and stage one of the HND focuses entirely on residential interior design and decoration. This second stage builds on the foundation of what's already been covered and gives you the additional knowledge necessary to completely renovate and remodel interior spaces or to take an empty shell and turn it into a living area, an office or even a restaurant. There's a number of options for the projects in this stage of the course, so you can choose the one that best reflects the area of design you'd like to go into and build a more relevant portfolio. Some people aren't particularly interested in commercial interior design and they would prefer to focus entirely on high-end residential projects. If that's the case, you can choose residential remodeling project options. But I'm showing you this commercial interior design simply because I think it's nice for you to see some variety. Whichever area you decide to focus on, we'll provide you with a plan of a concrete shell which is commonly known as a green building. You'll design the entire interior layout from scratch which includes walls and partitions, floors and ceilings, and all of the services that a building needs to function properly, such as plumbing and electrics. So if you want to include a raised floor or a mezzanine area or a feature ceiling, this section of the course will give you the additional skills and knowledge you need to do exactly that. When you're designing the layout of a building, it's important to consider how traffic or people will move between one area and another. In commercial interiors in particular, there's additional factors that you need to take into account. For example, planning regulations will usually limit the number of tables and the number of persons that can be served in a restaurant at any one time. The designer's role is to help the business owner achieve maximum profits by using the space efficiently to sit as many patrons as possible, but still maintaining an attractive mood and ambience. This is one of the things that makes commercial interior design so challenging and also so very rewarding for skilled designers. Just for the record, all of the drawings that you see in this portfolio have been drawn and rendered by hand. And rendering is the term we use for coloring in, but it's obviously a lot more than that. You'll also learn how to do this step by step on the course. As your design projects become more complex and more costly, you'll find that accurate 3D presentation drawings become an essential part of your design development phase. So here we see a 3D rendering of the bar area and this has been done entirely by hand. This is a computer generated 3D view and you'll explore different CAD programs as you go throughout the course. And just for the record, CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. When you're building bespoke designs entirely from scratch, you'll also need to produce more detailed construction drawings. And these drawings here show exactly how the bar area should be constructed and installed. Lawrence has also designed a very unique feature in this restaurant, which is a freestanding fireplace with a flowing water feature on either side. She has thoroughly investigated and communicated in these specifications how the design should be executed. All of the components that you would expect to see in any interior design project are included. And Lawrence has also designed the exterior of the building, which we call the facade. So just as before, this portfolio is telling a story of her design and exactly how it's going to be implemented. If you're ever involved in making structural changes to a building, part of the process will also be to identify any applicable building codes and to ensure that your designs comply with them. Your drawings should also be sufficiently detailed to submit them to the planning authorities for approval if required. If I was to make a very broad generalization, I would say the main difference between stage one and stage two of the HND is the level of detail and planning that's required. In this stage of the course, you'll learn to work with a variety of raw materials and create bespoke design features from materials like natural stone, metals and plastics. You'll also explore where to source these types of products and how to produce the detailed drawings so that they can be fabricated to your requirements. This is why in some countries an interior designer is actually called an interior architect. 
because in fact you're designing the entire interior architecture of the building and more besides. Lighting is also covered in stage 2 of the HND course because good lighting usually involves some degree of structural modification to hide the cables and wires. As with the previous project that we looked at, this portfolio tells a similar story of how the designer has made the best possible use of all the available space. She's created an attractive restaurant design, but also thought very carefully about ancillary areas so that staff can work and cater to their customers efficiently. Here we can see a banquet seating area, and once again, all the instructions are included for the joiner carpenter to construct the frame and also for the soft furnishings to be made, installed and even maintained. There are more detailed drawings that show the entire building layout, how it should be constructed and how to accommodate those essential services such as HVAC and plumbing. HVAC stands for Heating, Ventilation and Air Conditioning. Although you won't be responsible for designing them, you'll work with a mechanical engineer, you will need to incorporate them within your building and make sure, obviously, that they don't destroy your interior design. So you'll want to integrate them as discreetly as possible. You'll learn how to produce specifications in stage one of this course, but in stage two, as the size and scope of your projects becomes more complex, we'll also teach you different ways to communicate each aspect of your design clearly and efficiently. Project management also plays a very important role in interior design at this level and this final page shows how Lawrence has coordinated all of the various contractors to execute their work in a logical and efficient manner. So once again I've only included the highlights of this project which is actually over 150 pages long but I trust it's enough to give you a good picture of how stage 2 progresses from the first stage of this course. By the time you complete stage 1 of the HND you will have completed two significant interior design projects and portfolio pieces. By the time you complete stage two, you will have completed an additional two significant interior design projects. And these are obviously much more detailed. Sometimes people ask us if there is an option of getting work experience through this course, or possibly an internship. I can tell you now, we don't spend any time going down that road because our students don't need work experience. With a portfolio like this, most of them have no problem getting paid work immediately and even before they've completed their course. I hope this shows you why your qualification is only the starting point. Really, what blows our courses out of the water is this quality of work that you will have and that will enable you to be truly successful in the interior design industry.